Today's topic is my best Warhammer experience. Is it Warhammer? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Raypan. I'm Cal. I'm Sunny. So the reason I think this was my best Warhammer experience. Yeah, because I think it was the part where I got to use all these different parts from 3D prints and plastic sprues, and then we could do a lot of conversions, and then we went on to this website like Anvil Industries or something, and they had so many different options. It was like playing dress up and then they had these cute little alien heads you got little googly eyes and then i could they, paint they them weren't all from anvil industries well were they not from anvil industries no no they were well who cares they were so cute and then i could paint them in different colors I and mean, look at them look at how cute they all are and then you printed out these little doggies these little skink doggos i call them skogs they're so cute look at them look at them that's why we love this project okay can i get a word in please oh sorry <laughs> all right obviously this is a bit of a bit however the reason why we did this is to show the level of passion we had when it came to this project. So Sunny, tell us about why you felt so invested in this project. I think it's because it's a project that we got full control over, that we could put our vision onto it. So we start from scratch, we build it from scratch, we print it from scratch, if you will. And then I even came up with these little Fisher organizer boxes uh, where you put tackle inside. Mm -hmm. And we just organize these little heads, body parts, and everything it's like our little bit box and then to the point that one point i actually put the wrong arms on my lady character she had these beefy arms but i was just like okay you know what she's a runner so she probably has a lot of go juice so we'll work with that yes a lot of juice a lot of juice that's about as subtle as we can be on that one. <laughs> but you were talking about dress-up dolls and how it felt like you were connecting to your childhood or something when you started this? Yeah, because when I was a kid, there was this paper doll type toy. Well, it's not a toy. It's actually a book and they have printed clothes on the side and you can use them as stickers and switch out the dresses on this blank doll. And it felt a lot like that. So when we started this project, we went on to Cults 3D, I think. It was my mini factory but potato patata right so just to quickly give some context since we were so excited we forgot about this but we were doing this project to create war bands for stargrave crews yes that's right in stargrave they're called crews not and war bands. the reason why i think that's important is because with a crew they're not a war band they're just looking to make a living and the fighting sort of incidental. Yeah, so that's why we came up with the idea of having civilians and of course you gotta have aliens and you'll have the captains Well, and I stuff. don't think it's so much civilians, it's more people who are going out there right and then they encounter the other people yeah. and they're like, oh no, this is a fight. The idea is these are regular people doing this sort of line of work where they go out and find these data treasures to earn money from it. Yeah, there's data caches and there's physical treasure as well. Exactly. So we we wanted a mix of, like we said, uh, alien dogs, aliens themselves, uh, undercover operatives. Well, I think I think you're going a bit ahead. Why don't you talk about your crew? I'll talk about my crew, and then we'll talk about our best experience that we had together. Right. So with my crew, depending on the character that I chose, because I was really in love with the alien head, so I really wanted to incorporate that into my warband. Mm -hmm. So my captain, his head looked like an artichoke so i called him arty choke that's his name and then he looked really fancy so I, I gave him some you know fancier clothing nice suit pants and he has two phones and he's like always on looking at the stocks and the inventory and he's got a veteran guy next to him i think i call him mr brown and he's got like nice sleek white hair nice mustache and beard you know he's a veteran he's there to you know protect his boss at any cost and we've got these three little alien guys who i believe are the recruit and we've got these runners and chiselers and all that and they all sort of work together to work for RT Choke who doesn't care about you he only cares <laughs> about business and looking good but the reason why I wanted to let Sunny rant for a little while is because <laughs> what I wanted to do was to show you guys how you could maybe get your missus or mister make an honest man out of him ladies <laughs> 
way to throw a guy off. Anyway, I think you can see that if somebody comes in with some sort of passion, with some sort of control over what they're doing, they may feel more invested. Yeah, I think it's about giving the option of creativity and exploring your imagination that's great with these sorts of kits and miniature agnostic games like Stargrave and Frostgrave. I don't think it's just that. I don't think it's just that, you know, we had a lot more freedom. I think it was the fact that you felt that you had more ownership over this. Yeah, but I think the big part for me was also looking at the way these models were sculpted. They were not overly detailed. They were simple, elegant. You don't have to spend a lot of brain power looking over the model and the pieces and thinking, okay, where does this part go? How is this part supposed to work? What you is... mean that the conversion process was quite easy. Very you just easy. got the torso with the pants and now yeah. I'm done. And I think the way that Anvil Industries designed the male and female parts is actually very ingenious. They differentiate the joints with a bevel, I think, for the guys and a ball socket for the ladies or something like that. No, no, like it's that. the other way the around. The other way around. So, like, it's easy to differentiate because sometimes the arms can look very similar, which is yeah. the mistake I made the first time around with the beefy arms with my lady character. But as you sort of pick out these little observations, you start to see how ingenious the design process was in keeping the painter and converter in mind which made it so much more easier for you to get into it and get excited about it well i think for you especially because when you look at some of the more complex models you just sort of uh opt out shall we say yeah it was shall we move on to finally talking about my warband and the actual project that we had in mind at the very start of this well, video? maybe if we have the time <laughs> <laughs> With my crew, what I wanted to do was I wanted them to look like veterans of the last war. But I wanted it to feel like that they could have been veterans from one of our last wars from any time, basically. Yeah, and that these are just a bunch of guys going out and having an adventure on the equivalent of a space truck. Something like Firefly. Except I wanted a bit more of a vibe of, this is my truck, truck and truck, truck. What what a gone gone this mess is. I guess somewhere between the nomads from cyberpunk and like the firefly as Sunny yeah, said. Yeah, I would say that's a good way of putting it. But the other thing was I really wanted to get them painted quickly. So this is uh, <laughs> not my best quality. As compared to me who puts lots of effort in their painting. <laughs> So finally we get to my best Warhammer experience and by Warhammer I just mean wargaming hobby experience where we decided that we were going to make something but it actually started off with Sunny's dream from Frostgrave. In Frostgrave the leaders of your warband would be the wizard and the apprentice and they have different classes of wizards. You have necromancer, summoner, so on and so forth and then you have your generic soldiers and specialists like for example like I said soldiers soldiers, rangers, knights, templars, so on and so forth. And in Stargrave, they have those equivalents as well. Like for example, case crackers and hackers and such. And with that, you can actually have your generic crew and soldiers and then you can change out your captains as you wish and create basically whatever you want. You wanted it to be so that you could use every single different type of warband. Yeah, and you can have them in different sorts of games if you'd like and if someone dies, you can replace a model and they're all prepared and ready to go. But the other reason we did this is because we used to run games at a game store for Frostgrave yeah. and we thought, why don't we just have everything prepared so that if somebody wants to come along and try it, they can just take the guys that they think look cool and we just work with them. Yeah, and they can have all the options already available to them and they're all pre-painted. And thus began our idea of making generic, non-generic guys. <laughs> yes. So we wanted them to be generic in that you could instantly recognize them, but we wanted them to have a certain level of character. Yeah. So the first reason why we had to do the 3D printing was Sunny kind of hated the North yeah. Star miniature heads. I thought they looked really derpy. At least that was the impression I got with the Frostgrave ones. And since seeing those, I just didn't trust anything else that well, they I made. Well, I think the thing is you were looking at some of the metal sculpts. And I think the other thing is that the Frostgrave ones are the older ones. And they had a certain painting style. Yes. And like that really didn't help just, how you felt about exactly. them. 
exactly. But then I gave it a chance and I looked at the sprues online and I was like, you know what? It's not so bad. Let's I don't give think, it a try. I, d- I don't think you really did feel that way until you actually it's... physically saw them. Because yes. before you were just like... <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yes, maybe. But we did end up replacing a lot of the heads because I think when it comes down to it, they have this really odd style. Retro futuristic style to them. Yeah, kind of, but also not at the same time. Yeah, it's very confusing, but that's why we liked being able to mix the 3D printed sculpts that we really liked alongside the ones that came with the Osprey publishing ones. I really liked doing things like these two. They had a great story to me. So I wanted to switch up some stereo types around for example this guy with the space trucker vibe he's actually the hacker whereas the woman she's meant to be the mechanic and i sort of have this idea of the two of them arguing all of the time yeah, like over a, like, everything like an old couple like yeah. you said yeah and it's just so unexpected you don't even think that these guys would be what they are but it's that storytelling aspect that we enjoy and the other thing was it was fun using some different sculpts and different heads for example this one is done by andrew clark he's the same guy who did our adonis and fumiko model yeah the ones that we did for zorville yeah that's uh Turbo Nerd. Yeah. Yeah, we actually wanted to do something a bit more interesting for our memberships for uh, YouTube. Waypan Elite. Yeah, if you join us there, you can actually have access to these SDL files. But that's something that we really wanted to try, just like we did with our Zorval pictures. We had both a male and a female version of each of these yeah, things. Yeah, so you can have the options of having either one as the character you'd like to play in your crew. Yeah, because a lot of people got a big kick out of my 2 I see what it your what first it, mate yeah yeah and they called her tiktok girl <laughs> oh yeah because tiktok rifle girl because yeah. she, she was like uh here i go off to shoot somebody and they're just gonna document this before i go out <laughs> Which led me to use more exotic parts when it came to the Pathfinders because the Pathfinders are sort of meant to be your best all-rounder specialist. Mm. So I thought, how can I represent that? How can I just sort of make them look like the best choice? And then I thought to myself, oh, they must think that they're too cool for school, right? So let's give them a guitar. Yeah, rather than a couple, I wanted to make them the most vapid people on Earth. Yeah, it it makes sense when you look at them at a pair, the TikTok rifle girls like, hey partner, say cheese, and he's like bow, 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 over there in the corner. <laughs> and then you know they go off to a corner and he's just like, I'm gonna make a lot of noise to attract the enemy to us. And then once we had done up all of the pairs of people, I realized that robots were an option for this game. Yeah, so we then had to make robot versions well, of Well we everyone. didn't have to, but I decided to. And the one thing that I thought is like, how would a robot like decide what's cool? And I thought you know what he'd probably just look on the internet and just choose a whole lot of things that people think are cool not realizing that a whole lot of them are cringe (laughs) so of course he's doing a card trick while he's there and he's in like a bowler hat because you know oh people like cool hats but fedoras aren't cool so i'll take it and let's add a bow tie to that because why not And he's and then he's like got the katana because of course like everyone loves katanas. Yeah, and he's got like the very specialist gun, so he he looks super cool in his pants and everything. He's got the crease pants. pants. Yeah, the (laughs) crease. Let's just mix all these things together, and they're totally fashionable. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. (laughs) But I think you can see by how we've responded that the thing that got us most invested is that we got to tell some of our own stories. Yeah, we got to get creative with these guys and make some really bold choices. I think that's all it takes to get people invested into a game. Just let them tell their own little story. Okay, here. I'll prove it. So when we do our song outro, instead of just doing the usual song thing, what we're going to do is we're going to put up the pairs and we're just going to have their generic names on there like 
burner, gunners, yeah. so on and so forth. Don't forget the robots are individuals because they're robots. Oh yeah, okay, all right. You write up a story about them and you cannot mention colors, okay? Can't mention colors and we will try and paint them up. To match your story. Yeah, that'll only take us a, a month or so to get through all of them. Well, I guess it depends on how popular this video is and how many of them get claimed. Yeah. Uh, so I guess keep those stories sharp. And those characters wacky. And I guess we'll have to keep, keep those, those brushes, brushes wet. Bye-bye. Bye. Except for these two. We're keeping these two. You wouldn't know the difference between a spark plug and a dipstick. Hey, don't call me no dipstick. You are dipstick, yes. This is coming from a woman who thinks that a motherboard is what happens when your in-laws are here. At least I know how to cook rice, unlike your mother. And hey, when's my engine gonna get fixed? It'll, It'll be, be done, done when it's done. done.